Welcome to Optimization Methods for Machine Learning and Engineering. Today is lecture 10 on conic programming. The agenda is as follows. We will see a definition of conic programming and some motivation. We will see commonly used cones, so the important examples for conic programming, and then um, algorithms and, and concepts for solving of conic optimization problems. Let's jump right into it. Uh, in the very first course, we saw this hierarchy of optimization problems. And, uh, um, well, the hierarchy is such that the, the more uh, easy problems are contained in the more difficult optimization problems. And the reason for this is that we have more and more structure to use and to exploit in our algorithms as we go lower into, into um, the definitions of this hierarchy. And uh, what we will see today is that all these different levels here can be described by different cones and optimization over certain cones. And we will see a definition for that exactly. And uh, so conic programming, it unifies a lot in this hierarchy and we can exactly see what the differences are between these classes of optimization problems. And uh, they also allow us to state rather big and, and involved optimization problems more compactly. Uh, and then in the, in the compact form, we can, we can define algorithms for, for, for the compact form to take as input. Um, furthermore, conic programming lets us think about the dual. And uh, in, in, in some cases, these cones, they allow for a nice dual um, and uh, give us nice closed form uh, duality results, for example. And it also gives us barriers and, and good barriers to use in the interior point method. So conic programming is highly successful and in the past years, some of the commercial optimization packages where you pay thousands and thousands of dollars to use them, um, many of them have switched to conic programming or have now put an emphasis on conic programming so that they are also not hiding the fact uh, that they are using conic programming in their interfaces and, and all the interfaces for, for programming uh, these, these solvers are then also surrounding around the idea of, of, of conic programming. So uh, there are different classes of optimization problems here in the hierarchy and uh, today we will focus on three uh, particular ones. So today we will focus on the non-negative orphan. So this is the first cone we are looking at and uh, it defines here the LPs for linear programming. The second one is the second order cone. It's this guy up here and actually the quadratic problems can also be stated in terms of the second order cone. And the last one we look at today is the semi-definite cone. Uh, here the semi-definite cone and it allows for an even larger class of, of optimization problems to be solved. Now, what are cones? What is the definition of cones? Uh, it's rather easy. So uh, a set K, and we're denoting cones here always with this calligraphic uh, notation. A set uh, calligraphic K is a cone if, every, uh, if for every element X contained in K, we have that for every positive scalar multiplied with x, the result will still be in k. Okay. And uh, so on the right hand side we see a cone and it's easy to, to visualize this fact. So here we have our point x which is contained inside of the cone. And when we multiply, and, and this is here, it's a vector, and if we multiply this um, with, a, with a constant, um, then we arrive at some other point, let's call it here x prime, and um, this x prime will still be contained in the cone. Yeah? And you have to imagine that the cone is open on this side, yeah? so it continues like this, and all these points up here, they would also as well be contained in the cone. Okay. Um, However, we must not multiply with a negative uh, constant. So if we were multiplying our x here with a negative constant, we could end up, end up somewhere here on this side, and uh, this is not allowed. Uh, however, we can always multiply our uh, 
vectors with zero because here the zero it is contained in the cone and it's always contained in the cone. Okay. Now furthermore a cone is convex if for every two elements of the cone that I pick and two positive scalars then the weighted and added uh, vectors would still be a result of the cone. And um, on the right bottom we see a counter example for that. So um, here we have actually a cone that is made up from two sub cones. Uh, so here we have our first cone K1 and then we have our second cone here K2 and um, if I choose any point X that sits either on this side or it sits on this side, I can multiply it with um, a positive scalar and the end result will still be in the cone. Yeah? So there's no necessity for the cones to be, uh, for the cone to be connected. It only has to be connected, of course, at the zero. Yeah? So everything ends up at the zero. But this is then not a convex cone because if I, when I select um, my x1 here and my x2 here, then I could end up somewhere here in the middle and this would not be contained. Hence, uh, here on the right hand side, it is a non convex cone. Okay. Now, we could also look at, for example, Rn. Uh, and the question is Rn, so the space of all uh, vectors in n dimensions, real vectors in n dimensions, uh, is this a cone? And the answer yes, it is a cone and it is also a convex cone. However, it is not a pointed cone. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a funny cone, you wouldn't think of it like an ice cream cone or something, but actually Rn would hold the definition and here it would be a cone and also a convex cone, but it wouldn't be pointed. So because for a pointed cone, it is not allowed that if x is contained, that also minus x is contained. And that means, or this is only allowed if x is actually equal to zero. And that means that a pointed cone, it contains no, um, no straight lines that pass through the origin. Yeah, so here I have, of course, straight lines, but they all stop at the origin. Yeah, and on the, in the lower example here, here I have a straight line that passes through the origin and then continues. And hence, this is not a pointed cone. Okay. And now uh, the, the proper cone, these are the, the cones we like. The proper cones, they are both pointed, closed, and they have a non-empty interior. Yeah. So attention, different sources have a little bit different definitions for proper cone, but here we use this, uh, this is the most common definition. In the journal, a proper cone is uh, like, uh, like an ice cream cone, uh, the way we like our cones. Okay, and um, for these proper cones, we can define generalized inequalities. And um, these generalized inequalities, uh, they work like this. If I say that x is smaller or equal in the sense of k to y, that means that y minus x is element k. And um, we will see this often in the form as, as follows. Often we will see something like um, um, zero smaller or equal in the sense of k than y. And this here is equivalent to saying that y is element of the cone k. And uh, so this is just a very shorthand notation to, to, to state that um, a, certain, um, well, a certain element is, is contained in the cone. And uh, it often also makes sense to think about this like a generalized inequality statement. And uh, especially when we use the non-negative uh, orphaned, then for the non-negative orphaned here, this would exactly recover the definition of inequality that you already know. Okay. Now, conic programming. How does a conic program look like? So there's a canonical form for conic programming. 
and uh, it is as follows. So here it looks like a linear program. So we have C transpose X um, under the equality constraints X minus B equals zero. So like we know the constraint. And in addition, we say that X has to be contained in the comb. Huh? So this here is uh, the same statement as saying X element of the comb. Okay. And now, uh, well, we can restate that, make it a little shorter, and now we just say, okay, minimize over all the elements of the cone um, with a linear search direction and additional uh, equality constraints. And actually, every convex optimization problem is a cone LP. Okay, so this is a, this is a can canonical cone LP, we have to say, and every Convex optimization problem is a linear conic program, and uh, we can show that real, real quickly. So, um, this is uh, the, the shortest definition for a convex optimization problem that we have. So, big X here has to be convex, and also F, then the epigraph of, of F has to be convex as well. Okay, and uh, by that definition, so Let's also recall what the epigraph is. I have my function and the epigraph, these are all the points above the function. Yeah. So all the red points here, this is my epigraph. Yeah. And now um, um, an equivalent way of writing down the optimization problem is to say, well, we are minimizing over all epsilon in the epigraph, but we are only looking at the last element. Uh, so the epigraph here it contains my points x and then t where the t has to lie above my function. And then I, I only look at the last element of, of this vector y which would correspond to the t that has to be above um, the, the function itself. And by doing that in the case of our function here I would end up exactly here because only the entry at this position x star uh, here is minimizing the, the last entry of, of, the, of the vector uh, from, from the epigraph. Okay, and now we can construct a cone from that. Yeah. So uh, now we construct a really special cone. So uh, we are now in a high dimensional space and I'm uh, writing it down a little bit um, simplified. Um, but now imagine that here we have a convex potato and uh, this convex potato is the epigraph of F. Yeah? And now we can construct a cone. So let's say I have uh, my zero vector is here. So this is the zero vector. And then we can construct a cone that goes out like this, contains the epigraph fully and then continues like that. Okay, so what we say here is we go in, um, uh, uh, so let's say the epigraph is um, in Rn plus 1. So our, our x is contained in Rn and then our epigraph is contained in Rn plus 1 and now we make a cone that is in uh, Rn plus 2 and the way we do it is we, we, we look at all the elements y from the epigraph and in addition we have a certain u and the u has to be larger than 0 and uh, the, this point here is contained in the cone only well, if u is larger than 0 and if 1 over u times y is part in the epigraph of f. So you can think of this like a scaling factor. So uh, we have the, the u uh, goes like this and uh, I have certain, I have like smaller versions of the epigraph sitting here in the cone. So this is a smaller version of the epigraph and then an even smaller version of the epigraph and so on. And uh, so by 
by selecting this u for a certain value larger than zero, I'm making like a scaled version of the epigraph and I find this at this position when, when, when I'm going across, across the u. Okay. And uh, the problem that we have is that we cannot put u down to exactly zero because if u were exactly zero, then I would here have a division by zero, which is, which is undefined. Um, and uh, therefore, I'm not doing that. I'm reducing u as much as possible. So I'm looking here at also the very, very, very small u's and then taking the closure of that. And you might recall uh, the definition of the closure from the, the discussion of, of open and closed sets. And um, well, in the closure, this will just add the zero point and uh, in the end I will, I will have a cone. And uh, well, this cone contains then many scaled uh, versions of, of the epigraph. And then I can add an additional equality constraint. And for the additional equality constraint, what I do is I require my u to be one, which means I'm only looking then at the, uh, at the epigraph at the right scale which is contained in my cone at that point or at that like uh, hyperplane that I cut through, through my cone. And uh, what I then have is this very simple linear program. So then I'm optimizing over all the z in calligraphic x. So calligraphic x is here the cone I'm constructing. And I constrain uh, the, the points from calligraphic x that I'm looking at to be only from the epigraph at the right scale. And then I'm again looking at the, the function values uh, contained in these epigraph uh, vectors and, and minimizing over that. Uh, so the three definitions that we've seen here, they are all, they lead to the, their equivalent and they lead to the same result. The problem is calligraphic x is complicated and uh, we don't have nice closed form uh, equations to work with it. And uh, knowing that every convex optimization problem can be stated as a linear conic program, it's cool to know, but it doesn't help us. Uh, so what we rather need is we need nice cones. Uh, so we can construct from any convex optimization problem, we can construct a cone. Um, but uh, we need nicer cones and uh, then develop solution algorithms for them.